Coach, mm -hmm. Manny Diaz, defensive coordinator at Penn State, pressures more than most defensive coordinators on first and ten. Take us through the pressures that he uses and what problems it creates for the offense. I've known Manny Diaz a long time, and he's a very well-respected coach. He coached in Texas for a good friend of mine, Mac Brown. And the thing that makes, like many great coaches, Manny Diaz is not set with a system. He builds a system around the most important people. They're called the players. So there are times where you see that he's a high-pressure coach on first down. Right. You know why? Because his players are really good at pressuring. So first of all, Manny is really good at adapting his defense to his personnel. Now, when you start talking about pressures on first down, which they do a high percentage compared to other teams, a pressure for the viewer again is a, some type of blitz, a linebacker, a safety, a corner, whatever it may be. And like all phases of football, if you're one dimensional in anything, you're gonna get caught. The thing that makes his blitzes so effective is that they're very diverse. He can come from the field, right. he can come from the boundary, and he comes from the internal. And when you do the percentage breakdown, it's pretty even. So there's a lot of thought process. And you're an offensive coach getting ready to play a team, and it's 33% field, 33% right. boundary, 33% right. internal, and you know it's coming, you just don't know where it's coming. That makes it really hard to prepare for. Speak to the risk and reward of a coach that uses pressure. There's some positive negatives. Right. Let's talk about the positives. Number one, you're the aggressor. You're dictating to the offense. You want a, your team to be play with energy. They love the blitz. You keep the offense on their heels a little bit. Also, negative yardage plays. If you hit a blitz or a pressure and you get second and 12, that's very hard on offense. You're, you're rolling now on defense. Right. Now there's some negatives. What's the negatives? If they pick up the blitz, you expose yourself. What's that mean? That means that if you pick up the pressures, you just took someone out of pass defense and blocked, blitz, right. blitzed them, that means that back end of your defense exposed. And then the, the last thing is, I just mentioned it, if, you're, if you have a A-plus player, a first-round draft pick, they don't like to blitz as much. You know why? They want to put their hand in the ground and go beat that tackle one-on-one. -on -one. And if you're blitzing, you're moving all the time. So there's pluses and negatives. Well, he certainly has adapted well with the Penn State people. Let's take a look at some of what Coach Diaz does. All right, here, take a look at Penn State's defense here, and, and uh, I want to really take a second here. When you look at this picture, put yourself in the shoes of this quarterback. Right. He has to be, he's in charge of the other 10 players. And what he's going to do is try to read the defense. You can't tell where the pressure's coming from. Right. There's he no knows indication. that Penn State blitz <laughs> on, but there's the, the field pressure, which means he's going to come from the field. There's a boundary pressure, which means him or him can come from the boundary. Or there's the internal where both linebackers come through the inside. And obviously there's risk reward, but there's also, as an offensive coach, some plays aren't worth a darn in the boundary pressure, field pressure, internal. So here, we'll let the viewer kind of guess here for a second, okay? Because I'm guessing too, but I, I know because I cheated. All right, here it comes. So this is called a field pressure. Right. And that's a Sam linebacker coming from the field. It's field because the ball's on the hash and it's coming from the wide side. All right, Coach, that was field pressure. Next one is boundary pressure. All right, let's take a look here. Once again, let's go out the cheetah there. So let's go right here. Okay, where's the pressure coming from? Remember last time it came from out here. Right, right? the wide side. But this was the same look you just saw a minute right. ago. Right, right. So this is now called a boundary pressure. And it is an issue for the... Uh, the fact that you have a guy coming off the edge, but it's also a fact because the defense line's moving. As a result, they don't block the will linebacker here. But this is now a boundary pressure, once again, coming from the short side or the boundary side of the field. You saw the field pressure, boundary pressure. So, Coach, this is the third play that we've watched. All these have been first and ten, right? The ball's been on the hash on all three of them. We've got pressure from the wide side, the first play, pressure from the boundary, second play, and now we're going to have internal pressure. And they all look the same before the snap. So this is now the final one. Same look right here. Where's it coming from? This is the same exact look you yes. saw a second ago. Yeah. Uh, remember when the quarterback clapped his hands, he came. He came. The quarterback clapped his hands, he's come. And now all of a sudden you're going to see internal. And for the viewer, internal means a Mike and Will. That's the Mike linebacker, Will linebacker. You're going to see sometimes they come just shoot their gaps. Sometimes they cross. This is a cross splits, internal pressure. Great against the run. A little risky against the pass because you're losing some underneath coverage. Right. But very good against the run. You can see the penetration. Penetration. This is a first and ten. 
Why do they do it? They want to be aggressive. Number two, they want to get them in the second lawn. That's exactly what they do. Now you're in second and eight, second and nine. That's a tough position for the offense to be in, exactly where the defense wants to be.